Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another Gunpla review and once again yet another Build Divers review. Of course, this right here is the Ogre Jin X and once again this video would not be possible if it was not for those awesome people over at Hobby Link Japan. So if you want one of your own, you know exactly where to get it. That's down there in the description. But now, let's get to this. <laughs> So there is what the Ogre Jin X looks like once it's cut out and snapped together. And this right here has no panel lining, just the stickers that come with it. As for the stickers, we do get quite a few, but besides that big purple one there, they're all quite small and blend in quite seamlessly. We've got some stickers for the eyes up there in the head. The large purple one is in there behind a purple clear piece in the drive in the chest, and that reflects the light out quite nicely. Some grey ones for the back of the hands, more grey ones for these circular parts of the side skirts, and some more circular and triangular ones around here on the back around the drive. They're all quite small and not so obvious. However, the oddest ones are these ones right here and they apply around these spikes on the arms. It's quite a good idea. If you put them on the right way, they're almost not noticeable at all. You just need to be somewhat aware of where that seam will end up. But of course, if you're painting it, none of this will matter at all. Color-wise, it looks absolutely fantastic. Just like I said already, we've got some purple clear parts as well as maroon, dark purple and the light gray of the inner frame. All together, looking great. All in all, this kit looks great. The Jin X is an epic looking mobile suit. I've always loved the regular Jinx, but this looks like the Jinx hit the gym hard and didn't skip leg day. As for size, there's the Ogre Jin X next to some other Gundam Build Divers kits. And not to forget those awesome Gundam Age 1 Titus style shoulders, which I'll get to in more detail later. On that point, I will mention that this is the Ogre Jin X, not the Ogre Gen X or the Ogre Jinx. As you can see down here in the Japanese, it's got the kanji for Jin, which basically means blade, sword or edge. So this right here is a pretty cool play on words. According to the instructions, this version of the mobile suit is based on the Jinx 4, but this kit, the actual runners we get in here, are from Gundam Build Fighters Accelerated Jinx. Moving on to the articulation, and without a doubt, this is not this kit's strongest point. All you're going to get out of this is fairly basic poses, and even at that, it does look quite awkward in them. We've got a lot of limited articulation at the shoulders, the waist, and all that bulky armor. It really doesn't help. At the neck, we have down and up. Side to side, not all the way around, a bit limited. Shoulders can move forward and back quite a bit at that point. As I mentioned, the up and down there, not a whole lot. Full rotation there, bit of rotation at this section, almost full rotation rotation of this part of the arm but it is blocked here. Very basic 90 degree elbow bend. Standard ball and socket joint here at the wrist. This section is incredibly loose. Always falls off. As for the ab crunch there is absolutely nothing. Nothing to the front, nothing to the sides, just rotation there. As that is essentially just a peg. No ball joint at all. Front skirting armor flips up, side skirting flips up and once again we've absolutely nothing at the butt flap. The kick all the way up to the front again blocked by that massive armor. Pretty pathetic out of the back. And you are definitely not getting the splits out of this guy. Not at all. Extremely limited hip joints here. We do have rotation here. Once again, the heavy armor does get in the way of the full 360 degrees. This armor section can flip up here. You need to do that in order to bend the knee. And again, that right there isn't a crazy bend. Next down at the ankle, we've got this bit of up and down at this armor section. There's the foot all the way up to the front, all the way out to the back. That's a ball joint in here as well as this joint that pivots at that point. We also finally then have a spin all the way around. So all in all, the articulation is basic at best. You're not going to get a whole lot of poses out of this. And like I already mentioned, even at that, it still looks somewhat awkward in a lot of poses. You're only going to get a couple of them out of this. That's all. Finally, moving on to the accessories. And here is the Ogre Gin X with everything that it comes with. What we get in here is not one, but two GN Ogre Swords, a widespread dynamic left hand, as well as a whole bunch of GN Spikes. As for the extra hand, it's the same as always. Just pop it off like this, pop it on like that, and there we go, an awesome spiky fingered Jinx hand. As for weapons, of course, it's the Ogre Swords. The handles are in the same brownish gray as what we saw already in the Ogre Jinx, and the blades are in this absolutely beautiful clear orange. Of course, in the normal GN Ogre Sword mode, they can be held in the hands. When not in use, they can be attached to these pegs right here on the butt flap. And the two of these can be combined just like so to create the GN Ogre Twin Sword. Lastly, then we have the GN Spikes. And these are one of those things that are so awesome in theory, but not so awesome in practice. And basically what I mean by these is they look absolutely cool. They look really cool when connected, but they are a little awkward to connect 
connect and can fall off quite easily, especially on the wrists, not so much on the shoulders. But when you do manage to get them all on and they don't fall off, these things look so damn cool. The head also has two different modes, that's the standard mode you can see right here, and then you can pull off the visor, move it down slightly, stick it in slightly lower than it was, and what you got here is Hitotsume mode, which essentially just means one-eye mode. And there's a quick look at them both side by side. So that is it for the review, and although this kit looks absolutely fantastic, the Ogre Jinx, it just looks so cool, it is really let down by its design. Again, it's another one of those build fighters, build divers based on an older kit that wasn't that great to begin with. Although it is solid for the most part beside the wrists, the articulation is unforgivable. It's so bad, so sadly this kit right here is only going to get itself a Mecha Gaikotsu Bronze Dokoro. So if you're looking for... So if you just love the Ogre Jin X and want one, and you're fine with it in standard and basic poses, then go ahead, this kit is great for that. But if you are looking for a little more than that, then you're not going to get that here, sadly. But if you do want one of your own, then you can check out that link down there in the description and get yours at Hobby Link Japan. So as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.